Otari from the nation of Georgia. Uh, Otari, I understand that you would like to talk again about pornography, and I'm just going to give you the same little caveat I've been giving on this subject. I don't want to hear porn is bad. I would like to hear porn causes distress because, and then we can maybe discuss it. Is that a fair way to frame all this? Um, hello. Um, distress, you mean... I mean, I want to talk about sexual assault specifically. Yeah, you're, you're interested in talking about the harm caused by adult films, yeah? Yeah. But, okay, uh, uh, tell me about it. it. What's the distress? What's the harm that you are seeing out in the world? Yeah, but if I may, uh, before I get into my topic, may I ask something related to prior call? Uh, you know, I'd like to keep it uh, kind of on a one track here, if we can. Uh, what what was on your mind when you decided to pick up the phone today? All right. Well, um, so here's the study uh, by um, American Psychological Association. It's a meta study, so it's a compilation of studies, as far as I know. A meta study is a compilation of studies, and it concluded that... Um, Little doubt that on the average, individuals who consume pornography more frequently are more likely to hold attitudes conducive to aggression and engage in acts of sexual aggression. Sure, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with some of the connection and some of the words that you said, but I believe you're referring to a study that I've actually read. Uh, and there is some research to indicate that people who use a lot of pornography, particularly violent or aggressive yeah. pornography, are also people who are likely to hold violent or aggressive views that we might consider misogynistic or aggressive towards women. Uh, there's a lot of complication and nuance in that correlation, but is that sort of what you're what you're getting at here and what you were talking about? Um, excuse me, excuse me, I couldn't hear you. Oh boy. Uh, well, I was really just meaning to, to sort of summarize what I understood you suggest. Uh, and what I am looking to point out is that there does seem to be some amount of research and there's a, a lot of issue, I would say, perhaps with a lot of this research uh, that suggests that people who are likely to use a lot of pornography are also likely to have uh, violent viewpoints or be more willing to endorse a violent perspective when it comes to women, uh, when it comes to sexuality. And there is a lot of nuance to get into all of that. I think the most important word here in all of this is the word correlation. Uh, I'm going to see if I can't pull something specific up here in just a moment, but I wanted to hear from you, Otari, whether or not that is sort of your concern and the position that you're taking here. I mean, this is a study and uh, specifically a meta study. And uh, this um, compiled uh, study uh, definitely correlates the actual results of uh, adult films. And if your issue is that uh, most people don't see this uh, aggression in uh, adult films, um, here's another study uh, which uh, estimates that nearly 40% of uh, adult films uh, contain such aggressions. Okay, uh, so again, what we're ultimately saying is that there's a correlation between uh, watching sexually aggressive pornography and holding the view that women are perhaps uh, deserving of sexual aggression, uh, what we often refer to as the Not confluence that, model of sexual they, aggression. Mm -hmm. They follow the view, but they actually act on it. That is not research that I'm aware of ever having existed ever. Uh, in fact, this is something that I looked into uh, to a fair amount of length within the last couple of weeks and have some like kind of ready to go studies and things that I may be able to share with you if you would like to reach out over email. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how best to help you or what I might be able to explain or describe to you now, other than to say, if there is any amount of data showing that 
watching violent pornography then leader, later leads people to be more likely to commit act, acts of violence, I've actually seen a lot of data saying the exact opposite is likely true. So if you want to maybe, again, send us an email and let me take a look at what you're looking at, maybe help you understand what it is that you're reading or share some of it with our audience with a little bit more nuance, I'm happy to help any way that I can. All right, well, I'll ch share my studies with you. Okay, well, we will uh, we'll take a look and uh, appreciate you sharing that information. Uh, thanks for giving us a call. Uh, Derek, how does uh, that notion land with you at all? Just this sort of correlative idea that because pornography exists, that uh, children are more likely to be assaulted, that women are more likely to be assaulted. Does that pass the smell test for you on any level? Is there any well, smoke hmm. to that fire? Uh, I've been a writer for many years and uh, ha having read a gazillion uh, basically novels in uh, fantasy, science fiction that contains sexuality and all of that, um, you'll see people acting things out. So, you know, like, I don't know, if a kid reads a book on... Um, a uh, valiant knight slaying a dragon that may act mm. it out as a kid. Um, I was but... briefly banned from watching uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> after being caught karate chopping my refrigerator. So, you know, there is a, a is monkey there. see, monkey do component to humanity. Right. Again, does that mean that, you know, playing Halo or watching John Wick leads to violence? Does it mean that watching violent pornography, whatever that actually means, leads to assault? More tenuous, right? Yeah, very tenuous, especially, I mean, you know, there's a difference between adults and children when it comes to sex and violence, of course. And um, uh, I think you're going to find that um, it's... Yes, you're going to even see adults um, acting out things that they might see in uh, in pornography and the like. I mean, hell, uh, uh, LARPers, live action role players, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're acting out a uh, fantasy adventure. Uh, you'll also see the same thing with um, uh, those, um, you know, those. Uh, what's the term for it? The the martial arts with using uh, using um, armor and and well oh, fencing and, and things along those lines uh, no i was thinking more along the lines of uh the actual uh, enacting combats but oh uh -huh. yeah it starts with an h i think uh sorry it's eluding me at the moment but yeah so people will act out things and when it comes to sex sure if someone sees some interesting act in a porno they may act it out in their uh regular lives but um, to go to the extent where you're saying, well, you can't watch this because that might influence you in some way, you'd have to eliminate all fiction, all movies, yeah, all right? books. There would be no, you'd be, to coin a phrase, you'd be destroying the soul of of humanity by getting rid of all those arts. Yeah, okay, there can be some negative aspects that perhaps come out of it, but you'd have to really establish that uh, well scientifically in order to justify removing that from the public sphere. Yeah, no, I, I'm well aware that the last thing that the internet needs is another middle-aged white guy defining art. But <laughs> I, I very much think of pornography as a form of art and art as a form of play. You know, it's, it's something that mammals do. We uh, are afraid of snakes. And so, and a, you know, a young kitten needs to learn eventually to not only be afraid of snakes, but possibly to be able to kill one. So the mother cat finds a snake, wounds it, brings it to the kittens, and they play around with it as a way of working through the fact that snakes are scary, as a way of working through the skills that they need to eventually be able to utilize Mm -hmm. uh, as a way of forming bonds between one another, like play and sexuality, pornography, art, all of these things are just ways for us to sort of work out the fact that we're afraid of dying. And so we kind of like to see John Wick live on the edge. 
you know, we're afraid of uh, finding relationships. And so we want to watch romantic comedies uh, and see people love each other and connect. We want to maybe have the emotion of what it was like going on our first date now that we're on our 50th year of marriage. Like, that's even what horror. this is all here to do. Even, yeah, horror even horror is appealing because it, it makes you feel certain emotions. I mean, we are uh, emotional beings. It's nice to have those emotions titillated in various ways. So even horror, even fear is an excitement. It makes one feel alive. Yeah. You don't want to eliminate that. Absolutely. Well, 